Hey, sus listeners, I do more than just talking on the mic. I actually sing into the mic. If you want to hear my brand new song called Girl Next Door, it's available everywhere. You know what? Let me play a little bit of that for you. I'm falling for the girl next door. Been through hell and back. That's why she don't get attached. I'm falling for the girl next door. I'm falling for the girl next door. Sounds fire, right? Right after this podcast, go stream Girl Next Door. Available everywhere on every single platform where they stream music. Enjoy. Last night, Jake, I was doing some digging. You know, I don't know why it just came up into my mind, but I thought I started thinking of like old child actors. Like, what do you mean, like from Disney Channel? Yes, like people we used to look up to. Like, think about that, So Raven. Oh, the best. Yes, right. Well, you know the actor Orlando Brown. Yeah, of course. Well, he was one of the main characters. It was Raven, him, and and then the redhead girl. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> yeah, we forgot about I, her. I forgot her name, but look, <laughs> I I started digging into what happened to him now, and and dude. He went down the wrong path. Oh, he did some crazy things. <laughs> Look, we found he's a, he's an artist now, so he's got music out. He's a full blown rapper now. He's a rapper, and he also he, he made this really strange. Uh, he, he's kind of a, I don't want to call him a strange guy on a podcast, but he's kind of a strange guy. Yeah, he's a little sus, if you get my vibe. <laughs> I know in 2016 he got arrested for, like, substance abuse, which yep. means he has a drug problem. And from those videos that are on YouTube and on Instagram and all that stuff, they're pretty crazy. We can't even play those. A lot of them we can't play, and a lot of them are very dirty. Like, it, what we used to think as, like, our childhood heroes, this guy is not. Yeah, the things he said <laughs> that he did to Raven Simone, oh he has this God. thing that he goes boom chop boop up boop, boop, boom shot if you get what my tongue's doing that's what he said he did to rate yeah, it. but let's not get into let's that. not get into that that's we're trying to much. be family rated on this podcast and also i saw on his instagram that he is a recovering from the substances he's not actually he's went to rehab and stuff so good on him for that we hope him the best but man he kind of went off the rails a little bit yeah if you guys want to hear us talk about more people like this maybe next week yeah. we'll do someone else another show let us know if you want us to talk about where are they now we're going to try this as maybe a little segment but I look, I think our guest is here, so we got to get her introduced. So let's bring her in. Let's bring her in. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do, and I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy, and it's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around the house. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. Let's welcome in our guest. Today we have on a professional dancer, a pop star in the making, triple threat, Jordan Jones. Oh, shoot. That is an intro hey. right there. Welcome to Sus. How What's are you? Up? I'm great. How are you? It's good. It's good. I, I hear that you are having a podcast now on the Podcast One Studio. That's awesome. Welcome. What's up? Yeah. I'm here. It's called What They Don't Tell You. Mm -hmm. And what is it about? Like, I'm so curious about that. Basically, I mean, you guys are going to see when you come on my podcast. Ooh. Yes, we're doing but it. <laughs> I've just, and you guys, you guys have been in the industry so long that, and every time people are asking you, every time someone asks you for advice, and you kind of see the same things, yeah. you know? And it's like a more in depth, a more behind the scenes, a real true what they just don't tell you, how you can just help someone out in every aspect. And I just feel like, I can just help so many people, and I really wanted to have like a basically advice-based podcast, so that's, that's cool. what it's all about. That's, awesome. that's really dope. How, how long have you been in this business? Because I feel like I've known you in this business for a long time, but yeah. like how long has it been? So I started dancing when I was two. Two years old? Or like one and a half. Yeah, you were born in like 2000, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two years old, you were dancing already. So yeah. like, where did that love come from? Was it like a natural thing that was just in you, or did you like... I don't even think I could talk back then. Like, I was just walking around dancing. I had no idea what I was doing. I can't even remember back then at all, like, at yeah. all. I just don't even know. So my mom was a dancer her whole life, so uh. she just put me into the studio, and put me into classes, and I obviously loved it and kept doing it. It kind of, like, caught my mom's attention that I was, like, getting really good for my age, so I started doing competitions, conventions. I started getting scholarships. I started, you know, getting scouted by agencies. Uh -oh. So then I just started coming back and forth out to L.A., being a professional dancer. I thought that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And then I just kind of moved out to L.A., and my career has just, like, kind of... Blossomed from there? Blossomed from there, yeah. Wow. So And you grew up in Michigan, right? That's where yes. I found my information. See, I do look for information, Jake. Good, yes. for once. I, I I'm usually like, usually no, Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> no, so, uh, and then I, I read that your mom actually bought you, like, a studio, basically. Yeah, my, my mom and dad basically took over the studio when I was... I think it was around Christmas time, and I thought it was, like, the best thing ever. I got a dog, and I got, like, the dance studio. So I 
I used right. to get socks. Yeah. So <laughs> the same now. <laughs> Nowadays, it's just like, you know, you're getting older. But um, I, I basically also just got to stay at the studio longer. I got to get there earlier. I was just like more involved with it. And I think that's what made me really love it. But um, I feel like if, if it wasn't for them like buying the studio, I wouldn't have had like the life in the dance studio that I did. Yeah. yeah so talking about social media, Instagram came out in 2010, which means you were 10 years old. Do you remember how old you were when you got on Instagram? Yeah, I got on Instagram a month after it came out. Wow. And I already had like a million followers by the time Instagram was out for a year. Really? So I was like one of the first people to have a million followers on Instagram. Yeah, so that was cool. But it was also because I was on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. So it was kind of the very start of social media, the very first time I'm on TV. You know, the dance fans all um, know who I am because I'm on like, I'm involved with Abby and but yeah, I've been on Instagram since the very start. That's and kind of YouTube. Crazy. Yeah. Kind of YouTube yeah. too. Oh, gee. So wait, how did you get on this show? How did that happen? Basically, posting YouTube videos um, and different uh, channels would post my dance videos. And oh, yeah. this one uh, page called Dancing with YT, they posted it and people from the show, the producers, they found it. They had a Skype interview with me. I flew to New York or LA. I can't even remember so long ago. I flew somewhere and I like had a real audition and then I was just on the show. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's insane. So you come from like real, real dance backgrounds. How do you feel like seeing <laughs> some of these TikTok girls and stuff that really don't have like a background in dance like you that are blowing up on this app? Like I know you're really big on the app too. You almost have what, like 9 million followers, something like that? Yeah. How do you feel like seeing some of these girls that don't have dance, you know, backgrounds really killing it with 30, <laughs> yeah. 40 million, you know? I mean, surprisingly, a lot of them do have dance backgrounds. It's just that they don't show their real mm. talent. But I mean, they can, like, even my friend Lauren, Charlie, Addison, like, they all came from, like, cheerleading or dancing. Like, they were all, they were all athletic. They were all dancing. But um, they just kind of, and I, I mean, I don't show my real potential yeah. on TikTok. You have to, like, really like go 10% on TikTok for it to like do good. It's so weird. Maybe that's my issue. I've been going full 100%. That is pro honestly that's probably the issue. Wow. Like you really need to just do the minimal minimal like the absolute So I'm minimal. doing right. I don't post. Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So just like a little more a little effort, bit more. Okay. And then you'll go viral. Oh, that's it. I'm going to try it today. <laughs> but I I mean other than that, it's so crazy what can blow up on there cuz it's not even just dancing, it's cooking videos, it's everything. It's everything and if you are just honestly constant on it, consistent and you try all the trends and you're just on top of it, it's like kind of a and no brainer, win. yeah. Do you do all those dance trends? Like, cause I feel like if I could really yeah. dance like you could, like I'd be hitting all of these four or five times a day. <laughs> yeah, I do. I didn't really. So basically, when a song blows up and when a dance blows up, when a trend blows up, it's like very normal for people to do it over and over and over, which I never got. Yeah. I never got that people would continuously do the same dance. It's like you already did it. What are you doing it right. for? But it's because like. I had this one video blow up. It had like 60 million views. 60 million? And it was, yeah, it was the one that's like um, Travis Scott and I think like Rosalia or something. I okay. could be so wrong. It's like the, she got hips and one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so that one just like blew up for me. And then I was like, well, it blew up. Let me do it again. And then it blew up again. Uh, so then like, I'm just like, well, whatever. I'm just going to ride with these views, bro. And um, I just kept on posting it. So I feel like it's, yeah, it's just like you can k continue to do something. Yeah, and I feel like that For You page is so crazy. I always mm -hmm. see those TikToks that are like, if you see this one before my other one, then you're in this type of yeah. category. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and if like, you, yeah, and if you think about it, like with your YouTube, where you're posting one thing and it does good, you kind of continue that yeah. flow. And it's kind of like that with TikTok. It, say if you have one video that blows up where you're going 10% in this one dance, and you do like one move that people love watching you do, it's like, if that's what they love, you got to keep doing it. Yeah. You can't just like change it up and then you get stuck with the algorithm because the For You page like won't push you anymore. Yeah. And then it's like, it's the same thing with YouTube kind of. It's weird. Like they push weird things and then like they continue to push that. Right. So is the hack for TikTok to basically just do something that people like and then just keep doing it? That's basically yeah. what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do something at 10% that yeah. they like and then keep going. Especially with these dances. Um, the same moves are in all these dances. Yeah. So it's, 
you're kind of always just going to be getting views and going viral because that one move did good or that one song or all the stuff's kind of the same. It's yeah. like all the same. People just love watching it for some reason. It's like they just don't get enough of like the one booty pop move. You know? Right. Yeah. It's like throwing it back. It's like how many times can we watch the same it, move? But, but people watch That's it. Crazy. It is so crazy. I mean, I am too. I'm on TikTok for like seven hours yesterday. Oh, I checked crazy. my screen time. I'm like, oh it's my so God. Crazy. I've been averaging eight hours and 25 minutes a day. Like oh, that, mine's like 10. Really? Yo, yeah. My wrist mine hurts. Was bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy with moms, especially because of quarantine, moms have been on TikTok. Oh my God, like, I've been seeing no weird other. things like teachers doing TikToks yeah. from Zoom and stuff. And I was yeah. like, this yeah. is weird. It's, it's the new thing. So let me ask you, I was in this, the TikTok creator program, and I actually left it because I've been, I heard, I, I was like making no money from it first off, so it was like, what's the point? And I heard it was like capping, like your, like your push, because like now they're paid views rather than not paid views. Whoa! <laughs> so you don't know about that. But so that I, makes sense. It makes sense. sense, right? So I left it, but like, I, I don't have a TikTok as big as yours. Is TikTok like a thing that you could just do and like make money off of the views? Oh, for sure. So you, so a person your size makes decent money on on TikTok. Oh, for fun. sure, yeah. I mean, I was getting like five dollars a day, where it was just like not even worth <laughs> the time. Like, it it very much so varies, especially with your views. But that makes a lot of sense because I feel like I have been getting less views, but at the same time, some of them do right. go up. So it's like maybe my my minimum has gone down, or like my. Like your average? My like, yeah, kind yeah. of average, but at the same time, like my lowest I used to get would be like three million, and now it's probably like one million. Oh, I see. But then like they'll still go right crazy. But like the thing is with that is that you can um you take your money out every thirty days. I don't even know how to take the money out. That's the issue. Like I got a hundred dollars <laughs> um, sitting in there that I'm like I want that. I can 100. help you. I just Please. figured it out the other day because I was like. I saw the income plus or whatever, and I'm like, wait, what is that? And then it has like all this money oh, in it. Man. <laughs> yeah, and then I like take it out, and then, um, yeah, I can't even do it for like 30 days. It said. That's kind of cool though. Look, TikTok is like helping out. Like Vine, I started on Vine, and they didn't have anything like this. Like I know Vine wishes they were yeah. something like TikTok <laughs> back in the day because yeah. TikTok's just doing everything right. I know you make music of your own as well. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like? Having this huge TikTok audience makes your music so much, like, not, I'm not saying easier because music's not easy to make, but, like, do you feel like it's easier for you? Because you could easily make a dance, you're a dancer and a singer. You can make mm -hmm. a dance to your own song and mm -hmm. make it go big. Yeah. So I definitely can. I definitely could. Uh, my page has the potential to do it. I definitely do. But at the same time, I've, like, been really trying to focus away from the whole, like, TikTok I don't, yeah, I don't want, like, a, TikTok, I don't want a TikTok song. I don't want a whatever. I'm looking for like longevity, like mm. legacy type stuff. So I'm really trying to not, like I'll totally make a TikTok to my song, but I almost like steer clear of trying to make really? them like really blow up. Obviously I, I want my songs right. to be successful. I don't want it to be like, oh, have you heard that TikTok song? You yeah. know, I just yeah. want it to be like, have you heard this song? It's so sick. So I definitely like play my songs on TikTok, of course, but I definitely even don't even really dance to them. Interesting. Yeah. That's crazy because some people, you know, that's all they're trying to do is make a TikTok popular yeah. song. And you, on the other hand, with this huge TikTok audience yeah. is kind of doing the opposite. But hey, <laughs> yeah. good for you. <laughs> Like, maybe, maybe by the time this thing comes out, I'm over here, like, pushing my freaking songs. But, <laughs> yeah, it makes zero sense. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Before we leave this topic of TikTok, yeah. you, you probably saw the Ariana Grande what, thing. Yeah, do you want to know the funniest story about that real yeah. quick? Yeah, go for it. So, I hear her her thing on Zach yeah. Singh, because I watched the whole entire interview before everyone was, like, posting about it. I feel like the media is always, like, two days late with everything. We Us, like, in the industry, we need to get with these outlets and get them like quicker out right. because we know about everything. TikTok knows about everything before <laughs> I know. it's actually out. Anyways, so I see the whole interview and she's talking about it. And then two days later, I'm hanging out with a friend and we're trying to make a TikTok dance. And we're choreographing, we're at her house and um, we chose the song um, Positions by Ariana Grande. And she's like, oh, what I do usually is I go dance in public. Hopefully this is not what you're gonna say. But <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh yeah, we're gonna go like dance in public. Like, where should we go? And I was like, oh, like Santa Monica Pier would be awesome. And she's like, I mean, everyone's going to Saddle Ranch later. And I was like, oh yeah, let's just go film it at Saddle Ranch. I did not oh, even God. think. I did not even think about the whole interview. And so. So you proved it right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. A, I've literally never gone to Saddle Ranch in my life other than one time for like 10 minutes, didn't even go inside. And this was pre-pandemic. And 
I post the video, I post it to my Instagram story, I tag her, oh, and then like two hours after I post it, I'm like, oh, did I just do that? <laughs> but kind of, you might not even be able to tell I'm at Saddle Ranch in the video. Yeah. I didn't say like, I'm at Saddle Ranch, yeah. but people were like, people got it. Damn. Yeah. Did you feel like like she when she said what she said, like she was coming after, like, not, I wouldn't say you personally, but like as a TikToker, were you offended by it? Because I know some people like Bryce was super offended and like went on yeah. an interview yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, hey, do your thing, man. Um, I, well, like I said, I'd literally never gone to Saddle Ranch and I don't, I don't know what it was, but after that interview, after I've heard it, after we're choosing places to go, we choose Saddle Ranch. Yeah. So I mean, I was not offended because I've, I've, I didn't go there during, you know, the pandemic or, I mean, it's still going on, but like, I didn't go there during, before she said that. Right. But now I'm like, holy crap, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't even like Saddle Ranch anyways. <laughs> I feel so you. It's canceled. Saddle Ranch is canceled. <laughs> Let's see if that'll trend, eh? Okay. So before you got into like music, like the music that you're making now, mm -hmm. I, I saw that you used to have some rap music up yeah you were a rapper <laughs> and like some of them had a lot of views yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i'm talking like 50 million views yeah like, what like do you still want to make rap or was that just <laughs> something you were going through was it a phase or what <gasps> mom it was just a phase <laughs> exactly <laughs> um all of my whole entire team okay except for my manager but all of my team all of my family members, all of my friends, they want me to rap, okay? And like I told you, I'm trying to, you know, steer away from that. And that's what I've literally been doing for five years is like not rapping, clearly trying to not do that. Yeah. Because, it, I mean, it was also just like, you know, yo, you're mini Iggy, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm just trying to be my own person. So. Oh, you had a whole name for it? Yeah. What was it? No, like everyone called me mini Iggy. Mini Iggy? Like Iggy Azalea. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that happened, and so everyone wants me to, but I, like, I'm down to do, like, my own rap uh, uh, feature, like, right. on my own song, but I don't think that I will just go Full back. Full on rap. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a vibe, but also, it was back when I had, like, a squeaky voice. Like, mm. I can't be, like, all, nowadays, like, <laughs> and when you're, like, little, and when I was doing it. I feel like I could just talk about whatever and it was like fun for little girls to listen to. But like now that I'm older, you know, I would have to be talking about like Real horrible, yeah. vulgar, swearing every five yeah. seconds. So it's just like kind like of not the vibe. respectable stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's like I can't be like, go to school, kids. Like, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> like you know, I can't I can't do it in like a, in like a way I want to do it. Yeah. So I can't do it. Do you ever look back at old videos like those and, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I know for me at least, like some old videos that I made, I'm like, damn, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have posted that on the internet. Is there anything like that for you? <laughs> um, yeah, really funny. Like two days ago, my friends were watching my old videos and they came across like really, really old videos. And yeah, I uh, definitely regret a lot of that. But at the same time, I thought I put them all on like... Private? Private, but they're not. Because uh, they found them, so I don't know what I did, but I need to, <laughs> that reminds me, I need to go back in there. But just for everyone like listening about the whole private videos, I do have like a vlog channel now that I'm going to be putting a playlist of those old videos from that channel, so that if they want to watch it, they can watch them, but they're like unlisted in this playlist okay. that I'll have. But, yeah, that makes so sense. So I like deleted all my old stuff. It's just a music channel now. There's no more vlogs. There's no more... Vlogmas, the famous Jordan Jones Vlogmas, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna be doing it on the vlog channel. Got it. So you really just switched the whole thing up 180, mm -hmm. and you're just going full music now. That's the goal, or is it? It's just that like, I don't want it to be confusing. That's like the thing. Yeah. Like I want them to go to my page and just see music and music videos and be like, oh dope. And then I have a separate channel for my vlogs. It's just like mumble jumble. It was just not the look I wanted, so Got it. I I fixed it and. I still have them both, but they're just organized now. Maybe it was just an organization thing. You, you're you watching my channel, you see two music videos, and then you play it all the way, and then there's like a food video, and then there's like... A, it's just everything. A seven, when I'm seven years old video. Right. Like, it was just like, it didn't make sense, and I don't want people to be confused, so I wanted to make it easier for people. That makes sense. And and look, so you're, you're really young, and you're in this industry. I'm not young. I think I'm older than you. Uh, Maybe a little bit younger so. than you. How way younger. You? I'm 25. Wait, what? Oh, I remember now. <laughs> okay, but look, being young in the scene, like, mm -hmm. do you feel like you're ever nervous that, like, 
you know, you're going to say too much or do something dumb. and Because you're, like, very in the eye, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, do you ever feel like you're going to mess up? Because you're very public about everything. Yeah. Well, I feel like it has something to do with growing up dancing and, you know, always always being on time, always being professional. A lot of people who've come out here, they are, like, portraying someone that they're not. Right. And I'm not. Like, I'm completely myself. And that's what, like, helps me. Like, I'm I'm never scared of someone seeing something or, you know, I don't party. Like, I'm not seen at these, you know, things that everyone's at right now. Like, I, I basically just, like, have too much on the table to, tr- like, mess up everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because any, anyone can be, like, canceled in the blink of an eye. So, right. I mean, yeah, that's pressure. But at the same time, like, there's nothing that, you know, I... I do or want to do or ever will do that I feel like can bring me to that. Yeah. No, for sure. Very, very like all around answer. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, Have you been one of the people that have been getting paparazzi all the time? Because I know like TikTokers now are getting paparazzi. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. How has that been? What's weird is just like it's only West Hollywood. I don't know what it is. That all it happens in. Like, oh, I can go, I can go to Toluca Lake. I can go here, but it's like they're at these places all times. Like, honestly, if you just look like a TikToker, they're gonna take pictures really? of you. I get to know. Give us a location. Like you both, you both. If you walked up to literally Saddle Ranch tonight. Dang. Yeah. It's like that. So they're all waiting out there. It's not even... Oh, they're all waiting. So it's all these Saddle t- Ranch. It's Boa Steakhouse. It's like Il Pasteo. It's like Earth Cafe sometimes. Wow. But it's mainly like Boa and Saddle. Because they're so- like Sunset Boulevard. Easy to, you know, easy for people to get by quickly. So and it's TikTok- word of mouth. Yeah. These TikTokers are going out j- mm-hmm. knowing that the paparazzi are waiting for them just to get shots. Yeah, but it's also like it's the place to be, you know, right That's now. That's true. But... I swear the people at like valet or the people like right at the desks, I swear they tell people whose like reservations are where. Mm. So oh, for that's, sure. I think that that's what, what, how it happens. Right. Yeah, like, when, I was, when I was like 17, 18, I worked in Calabasas at Ralph's and mm. a paparazzi guy gave me his cell phone number and he's like, if any celebrity comes in, I'll pay you. So I would like text. Shut up. I would text him and be like, "Yo, Justin Bieber's here." Or, Yo, shut yeah, up. that was that guy. Have you seen? Have you seen how many views these like the Hollywood Fix guy's getting? Like he's built like a yeah. multi million dollar company in the past just quarantine. Yeah. By filming all the TikTokers. Yeah. Like, Wait, how much would you make? Not a lot. Like. Like fifty dollars and stuff. Oh my god, I was gonna say twenty would be a yeah, steal. Yeah, he'd give me like, 50, like yeah, 50 bucks. Is still I mean, it depends bucks. on the celebrity. If it was Justin Bieber, he'd give me like fifty bucks. If it was like <gasps> Kevin Federline, it'd be like five bucks. You know? I don't even know Kevin Federline. <laughs> I think he was dated like Britney Spears. Oh, like, he's a dancer, maybe. Oh, I don't know. and you don't even. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, him. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, the name <laughs> of the game is Share Your Scare. Yes. Okay, so what is the scariest thing that has ever happened to you, Miss Jordan Jones? Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, we stayed at the haunted Biltmore Hotel, downtown Ooh. Los Angeles, okay? If you know anything about me, ghosts are the scariest thing to me. Now, 100% not. But back then, it was just the, it was the most terrifying thing. I could not see like a light twitch, nothing. I would, I would cry. It was, the, it was just the worst thing. So, we're filming the show. I have like the like the sweet room and like everyone else is like in the same like row as me. So everyone could like constantly be talking. So it started out with, um, I never, I never thought anything of it. And we're like a month into the show now. And the, the girls are like, Oh, we saw two girls. Like, um, you know, they're so pretty. Blah, blah, blah. So I was not into this part, obviously, because if they're talking about stuff, like, I just want to focus on the show. Yeah. I don't want to deal with things. And so they start saying that they named these girls now. Now they, they call them Diamond and Pearl. So this is just, like, really long story. I'm sorry. No, go for but, it. We want to hear it. Yes. Okay. So they start saying that Pearl and Diamond and that they, they don't want them to harm them. They... They are so scared of them, but at the same time, they want to get along. So everyone makes up this song called Pearl and Diamond, Diamond Pearl, Come to Us, But Don't Harm Us. So everyone sits at the elevator at, at the nighttime, and they sing this freaking oh, song, shit. and every time I'm hearing it. So ever since then, everything started going wrong. And by the way, we're just teenagers, so I didn't trust anyone really at the same time because I just didn't want to. So And I hadn't seen anything yet. Yeah. So it's... 
The next really scary thing was that at the lobby of the hotel, everyone would say that they, when they walked in, they saw this girl in this trench coat and this witch hat, like at the telephone booth talking. So we have that now. So it's like a really old hotel where you have a round, around, around, and then the top floor is the 11th floor. And then if someone were to like fall off that top floor, they would land on the third floor, okay? So it was like all around and then you have the top and bottom level. So all of our rehearsals, all of our time was spent at the 11th floor, which was the top. And, you know, we would, all the moms would hear people talking in their ear behind them. We'd hear, we'd feel blowing on us. Still, I haven't, I haven't had anything. So, um, now everything crazy is happening. And the final straw was I got kicked off the show this night. Mm -hmm. I swear they were waiting so that I would like be able to focus and have peace of mind this whole time. So, I'm cut off the show. Me and Asia are in my room, which has a chandelier and all the stuff. So final night, packing up to leave the next morning, and all of a sudden, it's it's completely silent. All of a sudden, we hear a party of 500 people right above me. We hear footsteps. We hear bowling balls, chandeliers shaking, okay, in our real eyes, okay? Like, this is 100% happening. <laughs> this is not a dream. And I'm 13 at this time, okay? Uh -huh. She is, I think, 10. So I was basically, like, babysitting her because we were just in our room. You know, our moms are, like, downstairs or something. So we're calling our moms, screaming that they need to come up here, okay? And we're trying to get a hold of all the other girls. Like, no one's answering. Moms come upstairs, and they are just absolutely, like, totally frazzled. So then we got freaked out because our moms were freaked out. So then we have the maintenance guy come up we're calling the hotel they're like there's no one staying above you there's no one staying above you there's no one sure. staying near you there's no one staying up two two levels above you we don't know what to tell you then the maintenance guy was like can i talk to you and your mom uh, my mom and asia's mom outside they go outside they're out there for like an hour and a half hearing all the stories about the hotel while me and asia are doing our research about the hotel <laughs> and guess what what this oh we call, I think her name was Elizabeth or something. She had she had died. She had fallen from that 11th floor to the third floor. That's why the third floor is haunted. And I guess there was two other kids that also had passed away in the hotel. And then guess what? The trench coat girl, witch hat at the telephone booth. I guess she's always there. And guess what? Around Christmas time, there's a little boy that walks around in a bow tie, and everyone like sees him. And this hotel is literally haunted. Like oh, look man. it up. No, I see it, it right this... here. It says that the Millennium Biltmore mm -hmm. is one of the Hollywood's most important and most haunted cultural landmarks. Yeah, like, I was freaking out. I need so we didn't even sleep through that night. We were supposed to leave the next morning. I said, uh-uh, I'm out. And then we were out. So everything that you said and, like, saw checked out to be, like, reoccurring yes, hauntings that were happening at the yeah. hotel. And my mom, she went back during Christmas time that, that year, and she saw, like, the boy in the bow tie. Oh, and man. It is just, like, it is nutto. But now I'm not afraid of ghosts, I guess, really? so do you because think of that. Maybe that, like, helped you get over it. Because you said that was your biggest fear at first. Dang. Now it's earthquakes. Yeah, earthquakes. <laughs> that's, see, earthquakes are a whole different scare, you know? Because it's just, like, you can't you can't see them coming. You can't know they're coming. They just happen. I mean, that's yeah. kind of like a ghost, but... I guess so. <laughs> but to me, and maybe it also has something to do with my, my dad passing away. Like, all of a sudden... So, like, I even was, was scared to go back to Michigan because our house was old. And, you know, again, I was afraid of ghosts, so I didn't want to be there. Like, my mom would say that there was, like, stories of, um, you know, tugging at her bed. And she would walk home and candles would already be lit. And it was just, like, just not the vibe. that, And it, it was constantly scaring me. And so when my dad had passed away and we were obviously, like, home in Michigan, it was the weirdest thing. I had never not felt safe there ever again. Like, I, I literally feel like that is, like, the safest Wow. The safest house ever. When I used to literally, like, not want to be there by, like, how many stories I've heard from my mom or my dad or whoever it was because of, like, how haunted it was. And now it's, like, it's completely, like, guarded. It's wow. the weirdest wow. thing. So, like, now I'm literally not afraid of ghosts because of that. Wow. And I'm sorry to hear about your father. Did, yeah. did he pass away in the house? Yes. Oh, he did. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Which would you think it would make me more scared? You yeah, know? but it's it's but not. It was more of like a comfort thing. Yeah, yeah, it's protecting. Yeah. Wow, that's actually like really a cute little story in a way. You know, yeah. if you look at it with yeah. your head tilted and one yeah. ear like, open, yeah, yeah. it sounds kind of nice. No, like but, if if it feels yeah. safe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, definitely. I, I definitely think that's a, a thing. We've we've definitely seen our fair share of yeah. ghosts, and and we definitely think that. And I feel I, like that's on the top of my list of like just like because we've had actual 
paranormal investigators. Like there was this show called Ghost Hunters, and we had them on a previous podcast. If wow. you haven't listened to it, check it out. But um, basically, he said that he has seen like full on apparitions that are they look like real humans standing in front of him. He said he, one one time a ghost mm. has slammed a door when this guy had his hand in the doorway and literally yeah. took off his fingers. Shut up! Like, ghosts can actually harm you. And I never knew that. <laughs> You're going to scare her again. <laughs> I know, right? She's well, like, I yeah. got over that fear, but now I'm back. Yeah. The next part of our podcast is a caller. We have a caller who's going to call in and share her scariest story. So uh, let's uh, roll that call. Ooh. Hi, I'm Azia. I'm from Florida. I want to say I was eight or nine, maybe. I went over to my mom's friend's house. Everyone was in the backyard. And I was in the house playing by myself as a kid, you know? and I hear someone open the first door into the hallway. And I heard someone walk in, but nobody walked in. And then I felt like someone was there with me. And like, out of nowhere in my mind, I just thought, I was like, oh, like an old man. Like an old man came to like my mind. I was like just sensing like I wasn't alone, even though I was. I knew something was like there with me in the room. So I walked over to my mom and I told her, I was like, um, I was in the room and there's an old man with me. She was like, what do you mean? There's, there was no one there with you. And I was like, I felt like there was someone there with me. I heard someone walk in. She calls her friend over and I tell her friend the story and her friend and her, they both start bawling, crying. And I'm like, why are they crying? I find out that my mom's friend's dad died in the same room not even a week or two before that and i had no clue Damn. Nope. Nope. Oh, wow. What is that thing called when, uh... Wait, this, that's magical at the same time. It's yeah. scary and magical. Yeah, like, I'm thinking maybe it was the dad trying to, like... I, I don't... I always heard yeah. that activity is most, like, right after someone passes away. That's yeah. true, so... The one thing about that that I took away was how she said, I don't feel like I'm alone. Yeah. So my mom and my little brother live at that house in Michigan now because my mom needs to take care of my brother, who my dad used to live with. And, you know, my brother's a teenager. He's out all the time. And my mom now, like, she always says she's not alone. She never feels alone. That's crazy. And then, like, the second thing about that is there was a lot of, like, things that happened right after my dad passed away. And whenever we needed something or we needed a paper or a number or, you know, to know where something was, like, we were told. We wow. were, like, handed and, like, guided to all these things. Like, we would have never, ever found this, like, one piece of paper. It's it's just, like, the craziest thing. But, like, we were – my mom was told where to go. Yeah, I totally believe in signs. Like, signs oh. are a big thing, especially you ask and it's given. Like, it's out there. I was actually looking at houses, mm -hmm. and we found this one house that I really liked. And I was considering getting it and stuff. But then my mom was like, because my mom's like very like psychic or whatever mm -hmm. in a way. Like she feels energies and stuff. My mom too. And she's like, I just don't feel right in this room. I don't feel right in this room. And I was like, I just jokingly, because I make like scary videos and stuff. Yeah. I'm jokingly like, if there's a demon in here, show yourself, make yourself known. And then my mom opens a drawer and literally she said she felt like something went through her. Like that was in this, this room that she opened the door to, went through her. And she got super freaked out. She's like, I want to leave. I want to leave this house. The next day, uh, my realtor hit up the realtor that was selling the house and was like, what, is someone passed away there? And they're like, yeah, someone just passed away three months ago in that house. So my mom already knew and felt the spirit before. And I was just like, Damn. Yeah, never mind. My mom, I don't think my mom could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but she definitely, like, if she's like, oh, I don't want you to stay out late tonight, you know, then, or it's just like a mom thing where she yeah, just wants intuition, me to be home. Yeah. You know, you never know. Something bad could happen. Never and I know. always listen to my mom. Definitely. Yep, and I turned down that property. I won't buy a haunted home. Hell no. Oh. No way, sorry. No way. But look, Jordan, do you have anything that you want to share that's coming up that maybe the listeners don't know of? Well, check out my podcast. It's new. It's fresh. It's fun. And my Christmas song comes out on Black Friday. The video comes out two weeks after. Happy Christmas to everybody. And happy Hanukkah. Happy Christmas and Merry New Year's. And all the other holidays that come in between. Yes. Where can the people find you if they don't know you? Jordan Jones on everything. Look her up. Go stream JJ her songs. JJ Jordan Jones on Twitter, though. Oh, so Ooh. it's not everything. No, nope, not everything. <laughs> I, I need to hit up Mr. Twitter. Right, hit him up. Anyways, guys, that's it for this episode of Share Your Scare. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.
Thanks for listening to Sus. Share your scare. Make sure to subscribe and check back every Wednesday for new episodes. And don't forget to tell your friends. Follow all of our social media links at shareyourscare.com. We're going to be doing tons of giveaways, but only for our most active fans. If you have a scare of your own that you want to share, leave us a voicemail. Our number is 626-275-8695. Or if you just want to shoot us an email, our email is shareyourscarepod at gmail.com. And that's spelled with a U-R. Until next Wednesday, stay sus. Stay sus.